cases of COVID have doubled in Washington, D.C. since the last week in March. They're up about 60% in New York and Massachusetts. Here to answer your questions is Dr. Ali Raja, the Executive Vice Chair of Emergency Medicine at MGH. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Jessica. All right, Dr. Raja. So hospitalizations, at least so far here in Massachusetts, have not followed this trend. I know every day we look at that number. I think yesterday we had at 200 in the state. That's the lowest since early last August or late July. What do you see? What are you folks seeing at MGH? You're right, Ben. We're not seeing a surge right now or quite honestly, even a significant rise. During my shift yesterday, I saw a handful of patients with COVID, but almost all of them went home and they didn't need to be admitted to the hospital. I've also talked to my primary care colleagues and they're telling me that, yes, some more of their patients are testing positive for COVID, but fortunately they're not needing to come to the hospital. So we're actually looking pretty good right now. That's good news to hear. The, mm -hmm. We know that the Boston Marathon now, just a week away, about a week away, we've talked a lot about yep. how COVID can impact people, certainly athletes for a long time after they're diagnosed. What will medical workers be looking for along the race route this year if they're looking for anything different at all? It's a great question, Jessica. I've worked in a tent at the marathon in the past, and I can tell you this year they're going to be looking for a lot of the same things that we looked for in the past as well. We want to be able to identify sort of simple things like blisters and chafing and cramps, but also we want to be ready for runners who start vomiting or collapse or have heat stroke. And the risk of all of those more serious things is a little higher in somebody whose body is recovering from COVID. So remember that even without COVID, though, marathon runners are at risk for a number of issues, but the teams are going to be ready and can handle all of them. All right, certainly, Dr. Raja, more people are going to be getting outside to exercise as spring right. finally arrives next week. Looks like amazing weather here in New England. Yeah. So if you've had COVID, maybe in the Omicron surge, and you're still feeling a little more winded than normal, but aren't sure, is it long COVID? What's the best advice? And when should you kind of escalate your concerns? Ben, that, that's, uh, that's a great question. Like you said, it's going to be fantastic next week, and I'm really glad that people are going to be out getting exercise. That's almost always a good idea. If you had COVID and you weren't hospitalized and are fully recovered without long COVID, you should be able to exercise similarly to how you were before. If you were hospitalized, though, or you've got some, uh, you know, if you were hospitalized, you might be a little deconditioned. If you've got some long COVID symptoms and you're still feeling a little short of breath, a little foggy, it's really important that you talk to your clinician about what you're planning before you start. And then even after you start, if you start feeling nauseated or lightheaded or dizzy or have some chest pain, stop give them a call back. Remember that recovering from COVID can take a really long time mm -hmm. and it's really important not to rush things. All right, thank you so much for your advice, your insight, Dr. Ali Raja, we always appreciate you. Thanks, Jessica.